to NBA Countdown. So outside of all the uh, the playoff on the court drama, I mean, this is Los Angeles, and it's been a little chaotic here this week. Ty Lue was going to be the next head coach of the Lakers. Then he wasn't. Uh, according to Woj, conditional assistant hirings, contractual issues, all of those things came into play. And now he's out of the mix, it seems, entirely. And the Lakers coaching job is still floating around a month after it opened up. So Woj, I promised you you'd have to come back in here and do a little more explaining. Uh, <laughs> What do you have as far as the latest for this coachless Lakers squad? Yeah, Michelle, I mean, the Lakers miscalculated uh, on both of their top candidates. Uh, Ty Lu. they thought he would take a three-year deal to be the head coach. They, he had told them it was his dream job. He did not accept that three-year deal. Monty Williams, they never believed he would accept uh, an offer from Robert Sarver and Phoenix over the Lakers. He did. And now they're, they're left scrambling in this search. Uh, Frank Vogel, the former Orlando, Indiana coach, flew to L.A. Today, I'm told, uh, Lionel Hollins, who's been out of the league for a couple years, a former head coach. Uh, I, the Lakers are expected to talk to him this week. And Jason Kidd, who was already interviewed uh, with Rob Palenka, Kurt Rambis once. It'll be interesting to see if the Lakers circle back to him because if a relationship with LeBron James is important to them and their head coach, Jason Kidd has that. They were together in 2008 on the Olympic team. You know, USA Basketball really assigned Kidd uh, to kind of mentor James at that point in his career. And, um, and you know, James had wanted to see Kidd traded to his team in Cleveland at different times. So uh, if that's important to the Lakers, that respect uh, that James does have for Jason Kidd, you may see him resurface back uh, in, these, uh, in this process. Uh, Woj. Thank you. Oh, Rajan, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You were, you were there. You were in the trenches. Did it feel as dysfunctional inside as it appears to be from the outside looking in? Um, towards the end of the season, maybe. But you know, obviously no one expected uh, to happen what happened with Magic uh, or, uh, last game of the season. Uh, the timing we thought was off. But you know, like I said, no one had a clue. Um, but it wasn't as bad. We still were trying to fight, obviously. Uh, within a month out, we were out of the playoffs. But we still had pride. We still played with hard. And, uh, things didn't work out this year. Are you uh, are you interested in coaching? I mean, do you want the job? Give out there, does he like, want a job? <laughs> you want to do He's still that playing. Or? What you talking yeah. about? No, what you do? It's there. You can do both, like a player coach. <laughs> they already got a player coach. Wow. Yeah. And awkward. Um, no, all the, like boy, this is. Boy, boy, did you? Is... Did it not feel like the Ty Lue was the plan? And now, what is Plan C D E? <sighs> you know what? I was raised to. If I don't have anything good to say, just don't <laughs> say it. Some will be nice. Interesting. But, like, the disrespect is unbelievable that, they, that they've given to Ty Lu. He's a championship coach. This is an organization with 16 championships. You would think that they would value a champion, but they haven't. But the dysfunction obviously starts at the top anywhere, period, anywhere. But to offer this dude three years when you just coming off offering Luke five Oof. and to try to pick his staff... You didn't pick Luke's staff. Is disrespectful. Monty Williams just got a five-year deal. So did Luke, got another five-year deal. Congratulations to those dudes. And that's like the standard. You offer this dude three years? He's a champion? It's, it's just, it's, it's pitiful, man. I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what well, they're doing. I don't know where they're going. Well, I'm glad you're a gentleman and you're going to be nice, because I'm not. <laughs> and I've said this before. To me, the Lakers situation and the Knicks are parallel. I always said it was keep, when keeping it, nepotism goes wrong. And the Knicks fans were going to pro, uh, protest in front of the Garden. They panicked and hired one, Phil Jackson. Right. And he gave Derek Fisher a five-year deal for $5 million a year. And you know who was on that coaching staff? Kurt Rambis, who's a part of this dysfunction in L.A., which is why fans now out here are going to be protesting in front of the Staples Center right. tomorrow night. That's right. How about that? So who's picking? Tomorrow noon, was actually. It, was it Kurt that's going to pick T. Lou's staff? So what you saying, that Kurt Rambis is behind all this dirt? First he ain't Kurt. He didn't pick his that? own staff good. He didn't pick his own staff good when he's a head coach. How are you going to pick my staff? Is this fixed? I mean, what, oh, what is the Stop fix it, here? How do you fix this? Because every day it seems to be something else, and it tops the day before. You know what, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's a quick fix here. So I think, uh, you know, with the draft coming up, I'm not sure you have to have a coach in, in really? before the draft. Uh, but definitely, 
before summer league. You got to have somebody in there who can bring in the young guys and start working towards next year. But you have to find the right guy that's up, that's going to be able to put up and, and, and put up with LeBron, coach LeBron, knowing how headstrong and you know how how powerful he is around the organization. And that's tough to do. You know, Ty Lue can that's do that. That's not tough to do. That I mean, Ty Lue the dude do is right there. <laughs> well. This is the thing they tried to do with Ty Lue. They tried to line his contract up with LeBron. So right. once LeBron, the once LeBron left, they would have been like, okay, that's it for Ty Lue. We're going to move on to another coach. And Lou saw that as like, no, you know, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to I'm gonna be here for the long-term process. You, know, you don't want to be viewed as attached to LeBron, No, right? no, not at all. Right. You know, you want to be a view for, okay, uh, I'm dealing, I'm, I'm going to be here for the end of the coach. LeBron era, but if you go into a rebuild, let me be the, be part of the start of that. But right? And possibly build something. And, <clears throat> What's no, crazy, though, Paul, to do that. is they're, they're, it's like they're trying to like not be the Cavaliers so bad, right? They're, other than the Warriors, the other 29 teams in the league would love to be the Cavs. Four times straight to the finals and win a chip? When is it not about chips? And wh- Who, wh- Why wouldn't you want to be that? And why are you trying to play with my emotions? It's like... I, will, I love being a Laker, so you think that's going to make me take less money or less years? I tell you I'm what. I'm not doing that. No, but I'll tell you what. This is not going to – this summer is important because they have space to, to bring in a, a big free agent, and I'm not sure that free agent is going to want to come to the Lakers. The Clippers look more attractive right now because they got ownership in place and they got a coach in place that players would love to play for. So and the front they better get their act together place. quick or you're going to see those free agents not even take a visit or even free, talk to the you're Lakers. You're a free agent, John. Do you, do you try to stay away from this kind of drama? Like, ideally, just anywhere but dra- dramatic places? Um, at this point in my career, um, a head coach is big for me. So it's all about a relationship. So if they don't have one, then like I said, it's no, it's no go for me. So that's big. And the thing that gets lost is the Lakers' young core is really talented. Mm-hmm. We got so caught up in comparing them to Anthony Davis. And correct me, though, if I'm wrong. Brandon Ingram can ball. Lonzo showed he can play. Kyle Kuzma is going to be a 20-point scorer for a long time in the game. I like Hart also. So right. we started comparing them to Anthony Davis and dismissed the fact that these young guys are really talented. They need a coach right now. Right now. So they know what style they're going to be playing. And LeBron mm-hmm. James committed to them four years. He didn't do what he was doing in Cleveland one year here, one year there. He committed to them for four years. Yep, three and an option. You would think that they would do the same thing. It, it, to me, it, I, I, listen, my it's entire just, adult right. life, I've been in the league. I've never seen this before. Well, here, wow. well, here's what LeBron should do. Okay, if y'all don't give me the coach I want, trade me. Oh, he should demand a trade. Yeah. Who is the coach he wants? Yep, was that... I was hoping that it was Ty Lue. That's what I assumed. Well, let me ask you, if you're LeBron James and your, your team basically cheaped out and didn't give the guy that you like the offer that he deserved. Are you not angry right now as well? I mean, who is not? Absolutely. Is there anyone that's not angry right now at this point that has anything to do with the Lakers? Because it feels like no matter what side of this you're on, it it feels all wrong. And you know what's going to be wrong? When somebody takes the job, if they accept those terms... Because now the three it's years... Like crossing the picket line. Yeah, yeah. in a lot of ways. Because Charles just mentioned, when you want your coach to be there to help you build something, now guys are getting five-year deals. Now somebody can't take this job and take a three-year deal. And also, Jay, like, you're looking for a head coach if it's not Ty Lue. What, what, what's wrong with Mark Jackson? Give him an interview. Mm-hmm. Give him an interview. Right. We've seen him do a very good job. Absolutely. With what he had. Like, there's some other guys out there. I mean, I don't. I'm never Chauncey. But who am as I? As mean as I've seen you, who Chauncey. Am I, as mean as I've seen you. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, Rajan, you should you should do all of it. By the way, I think we, are we. Yeah. Anyways, Kawhi Leonard. Everything that's about to happen. Uh, you cannot leave that man open in this series. 23 mm. of 26 uncontested shots this series. That's it's about 90 percent. That ain't bad. The machine. And Jokic grew up to be the best basketball player. You probably haven't watched enough. We're going to talk the more about the seven footer. The, first team. the best player covered. in the playoffs that we're not talking about. That's fair. The new DK.